Here we have some more examples of systems of equations, and we want to solve these by using the substitution method. Now remember there's a, that the substitution method says we need to take one of these equations and solve it for either x or y. It doesn't really matter which one, but you do want to look ahead to see what's going to be the best thing for us to do. For example, if I look here, I can solve this equation for x, but in order to do so, I have to subtract the y, and then I would have to divide by 2. And dividing by 2 is going to cause me to have fractions, which is not going to be the best thing for us. I could solve it for y, in which case I just have to move the 2x to the other side. That's a simple step. Just subtract 2x and you're going to be fine. So yeah, we could solve for y. But let's look at the other options here. I could solve this second equation for x just by adding y to the other side. Simple, quick, effective. I could solve this for y by subtracting the x to the other side, but then I would still have a negative to deal with. Now, dividing by negative is not that bad. It's not going to give us fractions, but it's an extra step, and it does involve a negative. And we know that the more steps we have and the more opportunities that I have to, to mess with negatives, the more likely I am to make mistakes. So let's be smart about this, right? And maybe what we do is we take that second equation and we solve it for x. So if I solve this guy for x, let's see, what does he become? Well, we solve it for x by moving with y to the other side, so it's positive y with that positive 8 that was over there. And so now what I can do is that x is equal to y plus 8. So any other place in the problem where I see x, I can replace it with y plus 8. But you've got to be careful. You need to plug it into the other equation. Don't take this and plug it back into the equation where it came from. You're just going to be going around in circles and it's not going to make any sense. So instead we're going to plug this in for that x value right there. So we're going to do 2 parentheses plus y is equal to 1. And inside the parentheses is x, but we're replacing it with its equivalent expression y plus 8. Alright, so now you see the parentheses really were necessary here because I have this multiplication with 2. All right, so we've got 2y plus 16 plus y equals 1. So let's clean this up a little bit. We've got 3y plus 16 equals 1. This is a nice linear equation. We're going to subtract 16 on both sides. So 3y is equal to negative 15. Divide both sides by 3, and you get that y equals negative 5. Now, as we've already mentioned, that's not the end of my problem. See, we've got y equals negative 5, which is great, but that's only half of the ordered pair. And so what we do is we come back up here, and I prefer you take one of the original equations. You could also take this one. Let's take one of the original ones and plug in negative 5 and get what x is. So let's do that up here. And again, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. So I'm going to say 2x plus y equals 1. So then 2x plus, use my parentheses here, negative 5 equals 1. Now I'm just taking extra precautions here because I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to spend so much time doing a problem only to fail at the very end. So add 5 on both sides. 2x equals 6. Divide both sides by 2. And we get that x is equal to 3. So putting these two guys together tells me that my solution is the ordered pair 3 negative 5. Now, even though we found y equals negative 5 first, when you do an ordered pair, it's going to go x, then y. Now, what you always want to make sure that you do on a problem like this, you want to make sure that you check your work by plugging it into not just one equation, but plug it into both equations. Okay, So, if I look at this first equation right here, so let's check this. So if I do 2 times x, that's 3, plus negative 5. Let's see. We get 6 minus 5, which equals positive 1. 
and that's what we were supposed to get. So we can check that off. For the second equation, we have, let's see, we're plugging in 3 for the x minus, plug in negative 5 for y. So this gives me 3 plus 5, which equals 8, which is what I was supposed to have. And so we can verify that this is the solution to the system because 3 negative 5 works in both of those equations. All right, let's look at this next guy. Okay, we have x equals 3y minus 2 and y equals x plus 6. Now, for this one, both of these equations are already solved for a variable. You've got one solved for x and one solved for y. So it's up to you to choose. Do you want to take what x equals here and plug it in here? Or the second equation that says y equals, do you want to take the x plus 6 and plug it in up there? It doesn't matter which way you go. Both ways are going to be valid ways of working this problem. So you might want to do this. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm so used to putting the guy that's up here, down here, and that's fine. All right. So we're going to make that substitution. So x equals this. So when I see x, I'm going to replace x with that value, with that expression. So y is equal to, I'm going to do parentheses, plus 6. And inside the parentheses, what does x equal? Well, x is equal to 3y minus 2. So we plug it in, and then we have a nice equation to solve. All right, so I can drop those parentheses because nothing else is going on with that. And let me go ahead and clean up the right side of the equation. So that's y equals 3y plus 4. So as you see here, we had two equations with two unknowns. And now we just have one equation. And it's a single unknown variable. All right, so let's solve this. We're going to move the 3y to the other side. So goodbye, 3y. All right, so negative 2y equals 4, which means that y, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, y equals negative 2. And now that I know what y equals, I just have to plug that into one of the original equations. Now, be smart about this. I could plug y equals negative 2 in here. That's going to be a bit more, it could be a bit more work because I still have to solve for x. But here, x is already by itself. So this is the one that I'm going to use. So x equals 3y minus 2. So x equals 3. We're replacing y with negative 2. And I'm just going to do the work here. So that's negative 6 minus 2, which means x equals negative 8. And if you had plugged uh, negative 2 in here and solved for x, you still would have gotten negative 8. So it doesn't matter which equation you choose. I do suggest that you go back to one of the original ones just to stay safe about everything. All right, so we have negative 8 and negative 2. And again, it doesn't take too much work for you to verify that that is the solution. You plug negative 8 in here and negative 2, and you're going to see that it is valid. Now let's see what happens when substitution is not really the easiest thing for us to do. 